before you could even step out into your dream, before you start stepping out and decide to start stepping out into some things, you need to read the manual so that you won't make the mistakes down the road because there are mistakes that have cost people their lives because they did not read the signs or because they were doing certain things on the road that hurt other, other drivers and passengers that they had, trying to drive a vehicle under the influence that mind-altering substance and, and, and it caused them their, somebody's life or it caused them their cars to be total because they, they didn't understand you don't drink and you don't drive. So when you get down the road, there are signs. You got the yield sign and the stop signs and the red lights and the little signs that say, uh, they tell you there's a windy road. There's one that say slippery when driving. They begin to give you all of these signs. So when we get to a stop sign, there are people in your stop signs at your stop sign. You stop at the stop sign. They might have the right of way to go back and forth. They're going back and forth, but you're at the stop sign. They're going back and forth, and there are people that are going back and forth in life. You just have to stop until the road is clear for you to go through. So some places, you got to stop. You got to stop. Although you're pursuing your dreams, you're pursuing your destiny, but you're at a stop sign. Now, I'm here to tell you all the signs are temporary. This is why we think that things in our dreams or we're at a difficult spot in our life, we're just at a stop sign. But we think that we're at a permanent place in our lives because we are at a stop sign. I always tell folks about my Holy Ghost stop sign. Whenever I meet a person or something, is, it, 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 it gets me to a place that I have a question mark about it. If I get a question mark about anything, that's my Holy Ghost stop sign. I don't know what's about to cross across in front of me, but I know I need to pay attention. So I don't move. I don't give leeway. I don't come into relationship with because it is my Holy Ghost stop sign that say, hold up, wait a minute. Let me see why am I stopping. Let me see why am I being cautious. Because see, God put something in us so that we would know. And that's that we call it intuition. But the scripture called it discernment. He put discernment in you so it'll tell you when to stop. It'll tell you when to let that thing go by, yield. Yield mean they're too close, so I'm going to have to let them go on. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to go and fall into their temptation. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stop and let them trip and do whatever they want to do. I'm going to let them go on past me. We used to do a thing and when we were kids, and we called it check and see it. We say looking for our mother to come home, and we were hungry and waiting on some groceries, and it was a whole bunch of us, 13 of us, and my brothers would be up in the tree, and we'd be down below, and had other brothers and sisters up in the tree, and the little ones be down below. And say, mother, come, and they go, check and see it, check and see it. There's a red car passing by, check and see it, check and see it. The other one say, check and see it, not my dear, check and see it. Not them coming, but we know, and when we they see them. They go, here, here come my dear and dad. One person show is, oh, we finna eat now. We had to check it out. Watch. You're yielding. There are people that's going to pass you. Yielding mean I'm still moving, but I'm not going to connect that way. Because I'm not going to collide with you in life. I'm not going to yield to no haters. I'm not going to yield to no foolishness. I'm not going to yield to no negativity. You know, I'm not going to fall into that. I'm not, I don't have time to stop for it. I ain't got time. So when I stop, it's going to keep going by. I'm not going to drive into it and collide with any kind of negativity. I'm not going to collide into things like that. So those signs are temporary. They are conditions to the road. So I know that the road that I travel, every step of the way you get the signs concerning your dream. So each place you're going, you're getting, an, a, 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 you're getting the idea of what is happening. None of these conditions 
are permanent for you, but they are permanent forever in the driver's manual. You are in the driver's seat of your dream. Nothing for you is permanent. You are to be aware that you got to stop. There's a stop sign. You got to be aware that there's a yield sign. You got to be aware that a red light. A red light is not there permanently. Some people say this light lasted too long. Woo, this is the longest light. Don't take this road because that light is long that way. It holds up the traffic. But you got to know that when you're in a red light, you will be moving in a minute. See, when you're in a red light in your life, you know that you will be moving shortly. Just wait just a while. You'll be moving shortly. While you're at the red light, some people kind of occupy themselves. They adjust the radio. They adjust the air. They do different things when you're at the red light. So you got to learn to occupy yourself when you're at the red light. When you're at the stoplight, occupy yourself. Don't occupy yourself with what's going on. So, oh, did you see what they just did? You, oh, no, no, no. I don't have time to occupy myself with all of the other foolishness. I just occupy myself to make the adjustments so I can make my trip or my journey comfortable so that I can move at a comfortable speed. There are some things you have that's going to live on. And the one thing that lives on, it is your dream. Your dream lives on. You would have to quit it. And I'm here to tell you, don't quit on your dream. Don't quit on your calling. Don't quit. Now, Dr. Martin Luther King, he stood up and he gave a speech. And he said, I have a dream. They call it the I have a dream speech. Well, I can't use his I have a dream speech because he's already used it. But one thing about the dream is that it keeps living on because someone else picks up the dream and they make it happen and it keeps on growing and the dream keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It goes to other countries. It moves on. The dream lives on. That's what happens with the dream. Your calling is somewhat like that. It's like your dream. The calling is like a dream. If you don't do it, then someone else will. See, you thought that God, because some people say, yeah, God called me. I'm running from the Lord like it's a badge, like it's supposed to be something important, like you're so important. I'm like, no, if you don't do it, then God got somebody else that will. He got someone else that will. You don't want to be in the kingdom of God, and now you're 75 years old and said, I'm giving God, a, I'm giving it to God. Use me, Lord. Well, I'm going to tell you what the scripture says. Ecclesiastes said, remember now thou creator in the days of thy youth before the evil day come. And I will say I have no pleasure in them. When the keeper of the temple tremble and the strong man bow down, you better know what that's talking about. Before the evil day come, when you get old and can't do nothing, and I will say, that's God, I have no pleasure in them. Well, I'm going to give God the balance of my days. May not have 24 hours. But you're going to give it to God, but you done gave the devil the, all your good days. He said, I will have no pleasure. Before the keeper of the temple tremble and the strong man bow down and the grinders are low because they're few. Your teeth start falling out and the silver cords are loose. Your hair start turning gray. Oh, it gives you a description of life. And then it says the golden bowl is broken the heart. Now you had a heart attack and died. And the Bible saying because Solomon, he is the preacher in the book of Ecclesiastes. And he said because the preacher was wise, he knew what to say at the eulogy. And he said, vanity, vanity. This was his sermon. He eulogized him with these words. All is vanity. What is life? It is but a vapor. Here today and you're gone today. Wasted time. 
wasted life. Now you want to say, I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to hand him over to God. But God wants to use you while you're young and while you're yet strong, while you can do something for the kingdom of God. Because there's a song that says, you may build cathedrals, great or, or small. You, you may build skyscrapers, grand and tall. You may conquer all the failures of your life, but only what you do for Christ will last. So that's what you do. What am I doing for Christ? What have you called me to do? What have you instructed me to do? What is the dream that is in my soul and the dream that is in my heart? The dream that is in my spirit that God has placed inside of me. What he has called me to do. Your calling. What God has put in you. What he has put in you. He put it in you for a reason. The reason that people don't fulfill their dream is financial. I ain't got that kind of money. I want to do this. And, you know, when I get money, I'm going to do this. And when I get the money, I, one day I'm going to do this. This is what I want to do. And that's in my heart. One day I'm going to do it. I say faith without works is dead. I'm talking to dead situation. Say I'm going to do it when I get the money. No, you do it. When God give it to you to do it. You got to step out when he tell you or lay it on your heart. You got to step out and believe it and trust God. Because you got to think when you go to looking at the money, I'm telling you, everything is bigger than you. Your education, you can't afford it. Oh, you thought you could pay $150,000 for your education, $200,000, even education up to almost a million dollars. You thought you could afford that? That's why they have student loans and loan forgiveness and grants and, and scholarships and people that have died and went on that wanted to help somebody else and knew the struggle that they had. They set up scholarships and funds so that they could be able to help somebody. But we can't be lazy about it. We got to get on, like I say, put some, some works together. And we got to get online. And we got to begin to apply for the grants. We got to apply for the scholarship. We got to apply. We got to apply. We got to say you want to do certain things in business. And God has given you a business idea and laid a business idea on your heart and on your mind. And you won't go and do it because you begin to look and begin to calculate up what you think and you can do and what you can and can't afford. But I'm here to tell you that there's a fish with a coin in his mouth. Jesus told his disciples, he said to him, he said, go down to the lake when it was at a place. And they were supposed to pay a toll. Now, they wouldn't owe the toll because they weren't the strangers. They weren't foreigners. And so Jesus, he didn't take money out of the purse. He was teaching them a lesson. He said to his disciples, he said, go and catch a fish. And you'll find a coin in his mouth and pay this man. We'll be waiting. You go and catch this fish. See, the Lord wants you to go out and do what he told you to do and know that whatever he has said concerning what he has told you to do, that the financial situation is taken care of. He just caught the fish and there it was, corn in his mouth, brought it back. The reason that we don't have is because we don't ask. Because there is someone waiting on you to ask them. The Bible said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find and knock and it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asks, receive. So we have not because we ask not. We're too afraid to ask. We're too afraid to even ask God. We don't want to, when we don't understand things, we don't want to ask God even a question. We say we're not supposed to question God. Who told you that? No, that's just somebody that carried over somebody else's information. Don't suppose to ask God questions. Hmm. There, are, there are miracles that are waiting for you. There are miracles waiting to happen for you. But you got to ask and you got to do something. If you want a miracle, you better put yourself at the gate of beautiful. If you want a miracle, 
The man was there waiting on a miracle at the gate of, uh, at the pool of Bethesda. He was waiting on a miracle. Had been waiting on it 38 years. Doesn't matter how long you've been waiting for your miracle to happen. You got to know that God is going to give it to you. He's going to give it to you. Jesus comes along. He see the man. And he tells the man eventually in the story, make a long story short, take up your bed and walk. He's telling them about his problem. We all got in the pool before him. That's the problem. A lot of us, we want to do things in our lives and fulfill our destiny. But the problem is we have had so many disappointments that we cannot understand. We see all these disappointments. Well, this happened to me, and so-and-so did this to me, and then people did that, and that's why I'm here, and I'm just waiting. But, hey, could you put me in the pool? <laughs> Jesus, I ain't picking you up. Take up your bed and walk. You got to be able to do something. Do something about what you believe. I believe God. I trust God. I trust him with my life. There is a miracle that's waiting to happen. The man at the gate of beautiful, he's saying to Peter, he's telling him, he says, arms, got any money, help. Jesus looked and said, look, Peter, say, look upon us. And he looked expecting something. And he says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I got something better than that. Give out to thee in the name of Jesus Christ, and never rise up and walk. I'm going to fix your problem. I'm going to fix your problem. A miracle is going to happen, is waiting to happen, but it's going to happen on you when you do something about it. There is a great triumph. That's a, a, a great story of triumph, great story of triumph that's waiting to be told by you. But you won't write. You won't write. There are plays, productions, books upon books upon books, volumes of it, but you won't write anything. Volumes of books, but you won't write nothing. But you talk about it. Since you can't write it, how about saying it in your phone and go back and write per day? Let's make it easy. How about writing some topics and then write on the topic? How about doing that? How about organizing your thoughts and where you want to go and what you want to do? Write it. Put it down. I was once told that nothing beats a fail but a try. You are on the verge of a great victory. You're on the verge of a great victory that would change the trajectory of your life, that would change the trajectory of your journey. You're on the road to something big about to happen. Only if you just put pen to paper, only if you just step out and begin to do it, because you got to do it, you got to work on it, you got to get it started. Let people know that in this world you were here. Let them know that you were here not just because you had children, it's because I've done something in this life, I was here. Let them know that. Your dreams and the dreams that's inside of you, it cannot die. People say, my dream need to be reborn. <laughs> Wrong. It cannot die. Matter of fact, it refuses to die. So your dream refusing to die. You can't bring death to your dreams. Dreams are like the frequencies that travel in the atmosphere. And if you don't do it, it's somebody else will pick the idea up. So your dream, so you can have a dream. How many people are mad with folks, mad with their family members, mad with their best friend, mad with people that they work with, mad with strangers, upset with people because they told them of their dream and the person turned around and took what they was not doing and made it a reality. Now they're angry with them saying, that was my dream. They stole it from me. 
No, they took something and did something about what you had that you was not doing nothing with. An idea that you were going to die, but your dream said, I ain't dying with you. It released itself into the atmosphere. It released itself in the atmosphere, and it is searching in the atmosphere, looking for somebody that could what that could kind of tap in, looking for somebody that can feel that. Your dream, waiting. Dream, waiting on someone to come and claim it. Claim it in the atmosphere. It's waiting on someone to come along and speak life into it. It's waiting for someone to come along and take that idea and transform it, not just in the atmosphere, but transform it into a reality. It's floating in the atmosphere, waiting for someone to hear its voice. The dream cries out and says it is waiting for someone to hear it. This is how you know when the dream comes to you. You're sitting there in your mind and your your own business and you're sitting somewhere just sitting there mind your own business and an idea pop into your mind about doing something you didn't make it up you didn't create it or any of that you go wow the dream have a listener the spirit of God have a listener somebody is listening waiting it is waiting for it waiting for it waiting for it waiting for it and the minute that it happens waits for someone to feel the power of it. So when that person hear it and that idea in their mind, they get that idea, that dream is waiting for that special someone to activate the idea, to activate it, something that needs to be activated and understand the power of it. You're sitting there. I like the movie Apple Mortgage because the woman was losing her home. It was being foreclosed on. She had the city out there. All kinds of things was happening to her. But she had an ability to make a joke. They thought it was just her just saying, she said, well, I can't bake my way into it. Her and her son sitting at the table. And her son said, wait, mama, that's not a bad idea. This is what to do. By then, they start getting on fire for making these cakes. $40 a cake. She said, that ain't, no, it's not too much. $40 a cake. And it got her all the way up to where she is in Bake-A-Wish. Got her all the way up to Oprah. But you know what? She was just trying to save her house. See, sometimes you're trying to do a certain thing, and it's not you're doing that particular thing. There is a Frequency, there are frequencies in the atmosphere waiting and there's the Holy Spirit, boom, and the Holy Spirit places it inside of you, puts it in you. You didn't give yourself that dream. Let's turn to, you didn't give it to yourself or you thought you were that smart. We ain't that smart. Believe me, I don't care how much book knowledge you got, you ain't smarter than God. So you thought, oh, like, no, nah, this person just more yielded to it. All right, let's turn to Psalms chapter 37. And verse 4. And, and let me go here before I go to 34. See, that stop sign I told y'all about. And when you're trying to get your dream to going, and when you're trying to believe God, and people are in your way and doing all, your, all those things, fret not thyself, verse chapter 37 and 1, because of evildoers, neither be envious against, against the workers of iniquity, for they soon shall be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. So don't you be worried about how they're prospering, how they're going to stole, work their way to get what they're going to get. And you sitting there and you're struggling, trying to trust God, believe God, got your family, trying to do everything that you could. And then there are somebody that's doing things to you. Don't be bothered about it. Don't even fret. Don't even be fearful about it. Don't even be concerned with it. And don't be envious of them. Don't be envious about nothing that they have. For they soon shall be cut down like the grass because they got it illegal anyway and wither as a green herb. They got it because they, ain't tr they, they trusted in their own abilities. They got it through whatever they got it through. 
But it says, the verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. And so shall you dwell in the land and verily shall thou be fed. Uh, he's going to take care of you. Truly, he's going to take care of you. So all you have to do is put your trust in the Lord. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways unto the, uh, uh, commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Who gives it to you? God did. You weren't smart enough to give it to yourself. He gave you those desires. He put that thing inside of you. He put it there. He put those ideas. He placed everything in you. People say, oh, you got a lot going on. That's when they don't want you to succeed. Oh, that's a lot. See, it ain't you. It's me. So sometimes it's important that when you tell your lot to, tell it to the person that understand you. Tell them to the person that understand what a lot is. I'm talking to you with a dream. God want to make you great. He wants to bless you exceeding and abundant and above. More than you are able to stand. He wants you he wants to open up his good treasures to you. But you have to be able to tap in to what the Spirit is saying. You have to be able to tune in and hone in to what the Spirit is saying and what the Spirit is doing. You have to be able to catch it. If you, don't, you can't catch it, then you're going to miss it. The idea come and you go, wow, that's your, wouldn't it be a good idea if this happened? Wouldn't it be this if this happened? Let the idea come and I'm going to make it happen. Because when it came to you, it came to you and said, will you trust me? The Lord said, can you trust? Can I trust you with this idea? Can I trust you? Because I want to feed thousands, millions of people. Can I trust you? I want to feed thousands of people in your neighborhood. Can I trust you? I want to help women. Can I trust you? So when the idea come to you, oh, I, want, I would love to help women to get jobs and help them to dress them so that they could be able to go and get jobs to encourage them. He said, can I trust you? Can I trust you? You didn't get accept that idea. You did not do it. See, you got up and you start doing well. And when you start doing well, all of a sudden, you thought of other women. And you thought of yourself. And then you start thinking, hmm, the, wow, God really blessed me. I want to help women. When that thought came to you, it was already ready to go. Already ready to go. It's just very simple. Say, Dr. Bessie, how, do I, how can I help women to get them clothing and to help them and, and to provide jobs, you know, help them to get jobs, then I need to connect. You need to make connections. That means you got to build the proper relationships with people on jobs. Go be friend. Meet the person at the thrift store down the road. Introduce yourself. Go and start your small business and a nonprofit for, for women or women's for jobs. If it's veterans, whoever you're going to do it for, I'm just using women. I'm going to use the example of women. You're going to start a company for women and you want to help provide jobs for them. So you go and you make friends with the, with the management at the Waffle Houses. You build relationships with them because you're going to send women that way. Then you go to Macy's and you go to J.C. Penney's and you go to Sears and you go to them and you send corporate letters and you tell them you want clothes to provide clothes for women that to help them to get their interviews for jobs. To help them so they can have the, uh, proper clothing and attire for work. You'll get more than what you imagine. Say, I want to set up a place. And then you set up, say, your closet. Say, I'm going to use Wonders Closet. The wonders of the closet. That's what I'm going to use, Wonder. The wonders of the closet. See, because we're going to come out of this closet. And we're going to be a new person. We're going to come out of this closet at this place. And I'm going to set programs and workshops up so that they could train you. And teach you so that you can learn. I'm going to put you in situ, get you where you got children. So you got need a sitter. I'm going to set up where you can be able to have vouchers. I'm going to go and find all kind of ways that I could help women to provide for them. And you don't tell me about ideas. 
So when you talk to people, you talk to the right person. You don't go and talk to somebody that, girl, that's yours a lot. Mm -mm, that's a whole lot. I talk to ministers and their wives. I talk to uh, women that I minister with. And I said, I'm going to go to Atlanta. The Lord's leading me to go there. And we're going to do another ministry, but I'm going to do film. Bessie, those people are not you. Bessie, you're taking a step back. I thought you'd never go back to the South. Bessie, you're going to lead Adolf into that? They didn't understand the idea of what God had given me to do. So I'm going to do it with all of my might. I'm going to do it even though I don't understand all the time. I'm going to do it though I don't get a penny in my pocket. I got vision, and that's enough. I got relationships, and that's enough. If you got relationships, they'll get you some money. They'll get you the help that you need. Relationships are better than money. Because, see, you will lose money. But a relationship, you could keep those. Relationships are investments. Worthy enough to be kept. Worthy enough for you to keep relationships. I don't understand it when women are old and you get old and you're foolish. You're old and you're messy. I don't understand that. You're too old because ain't nobody going to want to fool with your old, but, old self. But I got time for you. Grumbling like my grandmother saying, mumbling. But I got time for it. I'm like, I want to go somewhere in life. I want to feel my youth so I get out and walk every day. I want to feel better. I got to get my heart going. May not be as fast as I used to be, but I'm going to tell you I'm wiser than I, I was. And that's enough. Because my wisdom could get me where I need to go. My knowledge and my relationships. You're too old to be messing up relationships. Too old you have to be ruining friendships. It don't make sense to me. I don't understand it. Relationships are important in the kingdom of God. That you maintain them. You got to maintain your relationship because your relationship is like family to you. Your relationship will open the doors that other people will close on you. You will get a better opportunity if you know the person. And the other person might have to be declarated. With all types of degrees and all type of experience. But because of a relationship, they will take the chance on their friend. They will take that chance on a relationship. Because it's going to work out. The relationship going to do it in the best of its ability. So relationship is important. The dream. So the dream want to be heard. And your dream want to be seen. You got to not give yourself discouragement and not give yourself doubt. Not look at yourself as what you are not capable of. You got to know that if the dream came to you, then you have the ability. You got to know that you have the ability. How God wants you to be great. He said, I will make your name great. You got to be able to say, I'm going to tap into this. People want anointing, but they don't want to pray. People want anointing, but they don't do the things that you're supposed to do. People want anointing, but they bypass the first law. The first law of the word of God. It is the key to the entire Bible. Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart from my mouth, but shall meditate therein day and night and observe to do accordingly to all that is written. Then he will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. But not until we put this thing to use. Put it in us. Put it in us. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Put it in you. Put it in you. Put it in you. Put it in you. The great, the commandment, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of a man. That's your duty. I fear God. I love God. I love God. And I'm going to keep his commandment. You don't have to tell me to keep God's commandment because I'm going to do it anyway. Because I love him. I love him. 
I love his work. So the dream that you have, he has something in you. He has put something in you. So you got to learn to do yourself a favor and learn how to feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Grasp it. Catch it. Grab a hold of it. Because the difficult spots are only road signs. You're at a difficult place in your life, I hear the pastors say. You're at a difficult spot in your life. You're at a difficult place. I'm just at the stop sign. But I'll be moving in a minute. Just letting the other bypassers bypass. Just letting all the other foolishness keep going till the road is clear enough for me to have a safe turn or for me to go across the lane safely. So you got to learn the road signs and you got to move on and you got to press your way and you got to know that God is with you. You got to not be fearful to take the road. I'm not fearful. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of any man. I'm not afraid of myself. A lot of people are afraid of their own vision because of what somebody has told them or what somebody else believe about them. Or even they look at their own selves and they take and put themselves in a position or in a place and think, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. But I'm here to tell you that you can do all things. You could do all things. The Bible didn't say some. It says in, in Philippians uh, 4 and 13, said, I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So whatever the Lord has placed in front of me, I can do it. Whatever idea he has given me, I can do it. Then if you could dream it, you could be it. And if you believe it, then you could, if you could see it, I promise you, you could do it. You could believe it. You could do it. I promise you, you can. But it takes the person that says that I can. I don't let my dreams go. I make them happen. I am the happener of my dream. I'm going to make this thing happen. Say, I'm going to build a thing. I want to set something up. For nurses. And I want to have all nurses working under me. And I'm going to build a program that I can have nurses. A nursing staff. And the first thing you say, well, I can't do that. Boy, I wish I could do it. But if I was a nurse, I'd do that. That's what I'd do. You don't have to be a nurse to do it. You don't have to be a teacher to run a school. If I want to operate a school, all I need to do is get someone with the right credentials because I'm the one that got the vision for the school and hire them that have the knowledge to do that. But I have the vision for it. And if they quit, then I'll just hire another one. See, I don't have to be a nurse to hire a nursing staffing company. I just got to care about people enough. And along the way, the dreams, little dots will connect dot after dot after dot after dot. They're like bird seed. They're like breadcrumbs that lead you to the way. Say, people say, oh, being an actress, you ain't going nowhere, don't pay no money. Well, when you turn your TV on and you get caught up in the drama, you get the feeling, the emotion, laughing. You go to searching out how much the actor is making. They living like this and they doing that. But I thought you said they don't make no money. Hmm. It's a whole different story. See, my story is different from your story. But I know one thing, that God got a person that's connected to my story, that's connected to your story, to make whatever that he has intended 
happen. For he that begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He's going to complete whatever he have in you. All you have to do is allow it. All you have to do is let him. Lord, I'm yielding myself to you. Lord, I'm giving it to you. Use me for your good. Use me for your glory. I'm going to get the job done. I'm going to help build the kingdom of God. We talk about we want to send people overseas. We want to do all this stuff for the kingdom of God. You can't do nothing for the kingdom of God being poor, being broke. You can't do anything. You can do very little for the kingdom of God. But if you say that I want to do something major for the kingdom of God, I dare you to open your mouth and say, Lord, I want to do something great for you. And he's going to prepare the way. He's going to set the people in place. He's going to put things in motion. He's going to place the right thing. He's going to put you on the journey. All you have to do is just want it. Want it. Want it. Just want it bad enough. Desire it. And then you'll look up and all you'll be saying is, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? That's what you'll be saying. I went into my high school. And I was looking and the lady said, you could go on into the gym. I said, I can't remember how to get around here. And she said, I'll take you. So I was on a journey for the Lord and I ended up ministering during that time. I was at the school. And I get to the gym. And when I walked in the gym, I see me running in on the other side of the gym where the freshman bleachers were. And I see me with those newspapers running in. See, you got to know that you can't be defeated. And you got to know that something great is on the inside of you. You got to learn to become creative. You got to be creative. You got to be creative. You got to be creative. My mother couldn't afford, you know, my stuff for the pep rally. I wanted to be in the pep rally and told us, you know, we had to have our little green skirts and white tops. And then we had to buy the pom-poms. Well, my mama could afford only me a green, the green skirt. And I had a white blouse. And I said, but Muddy, I can't do it without pom-poms. I need the pom-poms. To get those pom-poms, I needed $5. It's a lot of money. $5. And we didn't have it. My mama said, well, it just going on. You just clap your hand and be with your friends. And, and I was sitting at the house. And I was watching a show on dialing for dollars. And the woman, I think it may have been Marilyn Monroe, but she was wearing a newspaper. And she was a stripper, and she was trying to get this man. And she was like, I got news for you, two, three, four. I jumped up off the floor. And I went and got the newspapers. I got all of them in the house. I went down to my auntie. I said, Amy, give me your newspapers. She said, what you going to do with them newspapers? I said, I'm doing some work with it. I took the newspapers from her. And I said, Miss Lucy, you got newspaper? She said, yeah, baby, yeah, here's some papers, sale paper. So I just want the newspapers. And I took those newspapers. And I borrowed some scissors from my auntie. See, sometimes you may not have everything that you need. But you got an idea. I just wasn't going to go in that school without some pom-poms. You understand? I just couldn't find myself in that school without pom-poms. They were green and white. And I wanted them so bad with the little strings. And the I dreamed of those. My mother wouldn't let me be a majorette. But she let me get on the pep squad. And I was like, oh, man. But I ain't got no pom-poms. Sometimes you look almost apart, but you don't have everything together. Well, I took that newspaper, and I cut little squares, long ones, and I cut them up. I just cut the newspaper down there. I just worked and cut. I got rubber bands, 
red rubber bands. I got them big rubber bands that came from our newspaper that we would get and my mother would put in that, in that jar that she would use them for our hair. See, my mother never threw nothing away. She took them rubber bands off the newspaper and put them in our hair. That was going to be our rubber bands. She took that, and I took them newspapers. Some would be red, and some would be them just the plain color ones. And I took that, and I created, and curled them up, and balled them up, and did different things, stretched it out. And I started shaking them. And I got, and I made me big pump arms, big ones, two of them. And I came to school. And I wrapped them in a sweater, and I stuck them in my locker. Wore my green and white, walking with all of them and felt I was somebody. But the pom-poms had to come out. It's like, oh boy. You know what? I knew I couldn't come in there with holding some newspaper pom-pom with my hands down. I wasn't gonna do that. I said, I'm gonna wait. And I looked at that door, and the tears started coming in my eyes. And it took everything in me to control that thing. Because I remember that poor girl, that young girl that didn't have anything, have standing here now, looking across the way. Never knew that I'll be standing in that position. But I came in that door. I waited until they all had took a seat. And all the cheerleaders were at each area with the sophomore, the freshman, and we were freshmen. And I bust through those doors. I said, five, six, seven, eight. I snatched them doors open and I start boom with those things. I was going, whoa, I got news for you. Boom, boom, boom. I got news. I pop. And I start going by the, and I start cheering that freshman crowd on. I got news for you. Pow, pow, pow. I got news for you. I got news for you. Everybody, I got, at first they start laughing. Then they caught on. See, when they start laughing, I didn't stop. I got news for you. I got, then after a while, I got news for you. Ba, ba, ba. I got news for you. They start doing it. I got news for you. Me and the boy, and I start going, whoa, whoa. And I just start jumping and jumping and holding them things up. And I went and sat down by my friend. And they were like, let me hold them, let me hold them, let me hold them. I was like, no, nah, I got news for you. The next week, we went in for the pep rally. I had enough money and sold enough pop bottles to make up enough money to buy my pom-poms. But when I walked around that curve with my green pom-poms that I was ready, all of the freshmen, see, we won that, 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 that rally. I looked, all the freshmen had made newspaper. And they were yelling, I got news for you, pop, pop, pop. I got news for you, pop, pop, pop. I got news for you, pop, pop, pop. Boop, 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 boop. The whole school started, it became a big thing. Then it became, for years, they do that newspaper thing. I got news for you, we gonna win. I got news for you, we gonna win. I got news for you, we gonna win. I got news for you, I got news for you, I got news for you. Boom. And I was all the way down there jumping and going. I had myself so hyped up and fired up. They were fired up too. See, you got to learn to take what's in your hand and what you got and become creative. Let the devil know, I got news for you. I got news for you. I didn't hang my head say, my mom ain't got no, no pom-poms. I don't... Let me hold one of your pump pom Let me hold one of yours. We're going to use each other's. We're going to clap. No. I'm going to come in there with some pump poms But I did not know that I would set a trend. And I would set that, those people, those kids on fire. I got news for you. 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 We're going to win. I got news for you. We're going to win. I got news for you. I got news for you. Everybody, pow, pow, pow. Pow, pow, pow. They knew when they started doing that. Boom, boom, boom. 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 They knew what that was. We got news for you. We will not be defeated. You could come in that room and you could know. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. I came and I was like, oh, Lord. I ain't had no money. They never knew it. You got to learn that you could set a trend.
I changed the trajectory of what they believed and what they understood. I changed it where they put down their professional green and white pom-poms. I looked up and the cheerleaders had put down their nice pom-poms on the floor and they had them that newspaper. I got news for you. Everybody, boom, 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 boom. That thing went on from the football team. That thing went into the basketball. You hear that in that basketball. They were having basketball. They would be playing basketball. You hear that? Boom, 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 boom. I didn't even go to see the football game because my mother wouldn't allow it. But I let them know. I got news for you. I won't be defeated. And you got to say the same thing. Because people say they don't understand. What people don't understand, they're blaming on them, you. Because they can't do it. They're blaming on you. Because I can't draw. I'm going to get ready to draw a crown on this stage and get some ideas. I'm glad he's here. I'm like, Lord, look at here. Right on time. Right on time. Because you know what? I was thinking, I was like, I want Taz to draw it. But if Taz ain't here, best of luck, gonna draw that crown. That crown gonna be in that floor. Because see, I already have a vision. And I can see it. And if I can see it, I can make it happen. If I can see it, if you can see it, you can make it happen. You don't have to have all the details of how it's going to happen. You just got to know that you can make it happen. And then if I make it happen, I'm just all right with me. I hope I help you tonight. Don't analyze your dream away. Don't talk yourself out of it. Do not let somebody else talk you out of it. Mm -mm. Tell it to somebody that says, I can grab a hold of it. I can grab a hold of your vision. I can grab a hold of that thing. I believe it. I can grab a hold of it. I can make it happen. Because I'm excited to see you prosper. I'm excited to see you grow. I'm excited to see you preach the word of God with power and with boldness. I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it. That's the way I am. I'm happy about it. I want to see every person that we train be better preachers than we are. Yeah, that's a tall order. But I believe God. I believe him. I believe him. I just want you to know how to discern it. How to grab it out the atmosphere. Let the Lord use you for his good and for his glory. I don't want to be a one-dimensional preacher. But I want to be all things like the Apostle Paul. I want to be all things to all men. I want to be able to exhort when I need to exhort. And I want to be able to teach and lecture when I need to lecture. Because I'm telling you, there are certain times... That you have to lecture. But when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ, then I want to open my mouth and stand and declare the glory of God, the power of God, the change and the transformation of the Holy Ghost that he could change you, pick you up, turn you around, place your feet on solid ground. I want them to know that God is a God that can transform lives. If you're willing if you're willing, he could make it. He could fix it. If you're going through something, when you're going through, I don't need a teacher. I need a motivator. I need somebody to talk to me, to pick me up out of my dirty place, pick me up out of my low place, grab me up and tell me to believe God, to trust God, to love God, to serve God, to tell me that I can do it. I can do it. I need that kind of a cheerleader. I need that kind of a person to come and inspire me. The Holy Spirit inspires. So when I want you to calm down and tell you to listen and discern what the Spirit is saying to you. I know how to do that too. I would know how to do it. To tell you. But when you need some faith. And when you need that rocket fuel. You need somebody. That can press the gas. Mash the gas and motivate you. Lift your spirit out of the dust. Grab you up out of the ashes. 
and let you know. You got to say when the devil done knocked you down, had his way with you. I will rise. I will not go away in the darkness and go quiet in the night. I'm going to make my voice be heard. I'm going to say, I'm going to do, I'm going to speak, I'm going to declare, I'm going to do this thing. I don't care if you don't believe me. I'm going to do this thing. That's what you got to say. So if people care too much about what other folks think about them. What other folks believe. What other folks think you're going to do. But you got to set your mind. And set your mind on a course. That no matter what happened. Come to money, wind, hell, high water. You are going to make it. I'm going to make this thing. I'm going to make this thing. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to make this dream a reality. Oh, I'm not just a pretty face on the block. No, and I'm not just a strange looking person, a strange bird in a tree. I'm going to make this thing happen because I believe God. I believe God. So whenever you're going through, stop dwelling on it. Going through problems, going through pain. You've been afflicted. James Cleveland say, you've been through? Tell me about it. All your bills are due? Tell me about it. Where's your faith in God? Where's your faith in God? Tell people I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord. See, that y'all don't know I trust God. But I'm like this. I committed myself to the Lord a long time ago. I committed it didn't happen because we were pastors. I committed myself to that church in New Testament a long time ago. And when I went home to my brothers and sisters a long time ago, I'm faithful because I love God. I ain't faithful because I want to be seen. Not faithful because I want to be heard. I don't give because I want people to know. I give it because I love the Lord. But guess what? Whatever I give, he goes on a thousand times more. A thousand times more. He opened all kinds of doors. We're proof of that, Bishop and I. Proof of it. We come from a long way. Bishop Mack told me, he said, ooh, girl. to pick them. See, but the difference was that they didn't know my heart to God. I loved him. And I just wanted to do his will. So I just want to do your will. And if your will is just to clean the church, there ain't thing winning no souls and bringing all the people in with nothing. I was like, they need to be saved. But cleaning God's house means more to me than anything in this world. Had no idea I would ever become a preacher. But I stand in front of that brown podium and say, God, I hope you're pleased with me. I want you to be proud of me. I just want you to be proud. I never had no one to say I'm proud of you. I'm proud. That's why I tell the kids, I'm so proud of you. And I mean it. I mean it. I just want to make you proud of me. So he dressed me up. And he put his anointing in me. He put his anointing deep in me. I just pray and talk to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you. Thank you for your discernment. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. We're done. We're done. 
Thank you for tuning in. Bless his name. Bless his name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miles. You can take it off, Miles. Amen. Amen. We're receiving our offering. I'm glad. Like Deacon Marshall would say, I'm happy.